Hello and welcome back to Sprite Guard Plays Hyper Rogue. We are continuing on our final hurrah, our final journey, and I don't remember what we had planned, if anything. But there is a lot for us to do. There are a lot of different things we could try. Uh, we've been to the minefield. Uh, I don't want to get into any 25 treasure shenanigans. I believe we have seen all of the orbs that we uh, have available to play with. Uh, we have the Ruined City. I don't remember what the orb for the Ruined City is. I don't remember what the orb for the Hunting Ground is either. Uh, let's see, did we actually... I feel like we've been here before. Maybe not. Let's see, what's the treasure? Turquoise. Okay. Yep, so that's our first turquoise of the game. So it's just a matter of finding that straight line of escape. And uh, here we actually... Ah! Now, I have heard a rumor that could possibly end this game right here. And so I'm wondering if we should try it or not, because we're, you know, just a few minutes into this run. And so, you know, I, I don't want to take a huge risk. I've heard that if you use an orb in the hunting grounds, a ring of dogs will spawn. Now, I believe that I'm entirely capable of escaping a ring of dogs, so let's try it. And uh, it looks like that might not happen for the Orb of Safety in particular, which makes sense. And uh, here we actually have Trollheim, someplace we have not been in quite a while. This is a very slow land. I was thinking about uh, approaching some of the slow lands. Uh, we have not done dodecahedrons in a very long time. Let's see, I don't remember if there's any tricks to finding nests. I think if we just wander randomly, we should encounter one eventually, and then it's kind of a question of, are we going to be able to find our way back to it? And that's always a challenge. So I think following along a wall is a good way to do it or following along a series of walls, uh, because that will make it easier to construct a bridge back to it. And so we're going to look out for those long walls that we see sometimes, and uh, try and follow those along to see what we can make of that. But I'm not, like, super committed. And here actually is another crossroads. And now that I've mentioned it, I'm actually, like, starting to... Oh, I remember. I remember. Because I'm starting to itch for some dodecahedrons, but I actually remember now that we've seen Relia what we're going to do. And we are going to go on a Yender quest. Now, for the... Oh, dear. We are... We've crossed the border into a Hall of Mirrors without realizing it. And now we have, um, quite the mob on our tail. There we go. So that wasn't too bad. So we kind of have to look for this perfect storm. First of all, we need to find a hive. And uh, we need a hive and Relia. So if we can find our way back to that Relia, which is pretty unlikely at this point because we got pushed pretty far away from it. So we just need to find a Relia. Oh, and here's a Hive. So yeah, we just need one or the other. Now, the way you're supposed to do it is uh, you're supposed to uh, get 25 Demon Daisies. I don't think my computer is up to that. Yeah, it's, it's chugging just stepping in here, and we'd have to go, like, deep into hell to actually get 25 treasures. So here we have a hive and an orb of Yendor, and there is a Relia. They're a little bit hard to find from each other. Ah, uh, and you know what? I actually realized something. I realized that 
the odds of the key spawning in the hive are extremely low. And so that's going to be a whole other problem. And so I'm, I'm wondering, like, should I go off camera and do it? Or, you know, should we change our approach? Should we change what we're trying to do? Maybe we should, you know, do some other stuff. Um, the problem is if I, if I go into hell off camera, there's a chance of losing the run. And, you know, we can find random orbs of Yendor and hope that they are in the right place. Now, the minefield uh, is a place where it's relatively easy to retrace your steps, though it can be difficult to make progress. And so, you know, we need to have that kind of those perfect, oh dear, that was a bad idea. We need to have the, that perfect combination of things where the key remains in the, the minefield, which is not at all guaranteed. And also, uh, we can find our way to it without getting blocked off by anything impossible. And the minefield is pretty aggressive at this point. And so it's not going to make it easy for us. For instance, let's see, okay, so over here, it's like in this direction, we have exhausted our options. And, you know, we can try to do something like this. And sweep around here, and that gets us to there, which gets us to there, which gets us that. So now we know two of these, but that's not quite enough. Ah, but now we can clear around this one. And around this one, and then around this one, now this one's a two, so we, we haven't solved it yet. That one's a two. Let's see, this is a one. I'm trying to see if there's any way we can make progress towards that orb of Yendor. And it's just becoming too tight for us to continue in that direction. I don't think there's any way to go in that particular direction without guessing. There might be some kind of induction stuff we can do. I'm not really sure. Sometimes in Minesweeper, you can figure stuff out. Uh, I don't really see anything... You know, sometimes you can see, like, a, a 2 and a 3, and so you know that the 2 aren't ones that are shared. But um, because we only have uh, 6 or 7 connectivity, uh, we don't have actually as many data points to work with. And so it's actually a little bit harder to make inferences beyond the obvious ones. Now, it may be possible for someone who's better at Minesweeper than I am, but I really don't see any way of progressing from here without guessing. And I am not going to risk our really, really good run on a guess. And, you know, I'm wondering, like, can we work our way around like this? Maybe that's the way to do it. Because that opens up that, which opens up those, which opens up these three. Which leaves this one. Ah, but we can open these two. Which leaves that one. And now we can open that. 
which again we've hit a dead end and it's not really taking us so what i was thinking is we can kind of create an edge around this way but we've already exhausted that option and so now you know we can try and look for an edge over this way and try and sweep around like that but here again we've kind of hit something where you know, I'm not too confident. All right, so now we've got something to work with. For a little while, at least. But once again, you know, once again, we're in a situation where... Ah, here we go. We can do that. And that'll give us those two, which gives us that. And then we can take these three... And now we're starting to loop around. And once again, add a little bit of a dead end. Okay, so that'll give us that one, which gives us these two, which gives us another opening. And we get that one. We could take an egg to get a little bit more information in the direction we want to go. But at this point, it seems like we're going in so much the wrong direction that it's not going to be useful. And I'm trying to look at this. Now, here is something. So we know one of these two and one of these two. And it can't be these two, because there's only one touching this. And so it could be this one, and then it would be this one, and then we would know that this is safe. Or it could be this one and this one, and then we would know that this one is safe. But neither of those... There's nothing to distinguish those two options. And I'm trying to think if there was even a situation where it would. I guess if we had more information about over here. But again, these two only share a single neighbor. And because they only share a single neighbor we get less information from them. And so I'm inclined to abandon this line of attack. Land of Power is uh, a little bit too much, I think. So here is another hive. And we have, let's see, we have orbs of teleport spawning. And those are really, really useful. So we have another Hive and Relia next to each other. So let's get a Pet Tentacle, because that is really one of the key things that we need. That's really what makes this strategy work. And so if we can get a Pet Tentacle, we could theoretically carry it alongside the Hive almost indefinitely, and they are just not spawning. It is really rare to see this few tentacles in Relia. And so now we may have lost track of where our hive even is. So there's an ivy. We have a Crossroads Type 4 over there, which would actually make a Pet Tentacle a little bit easier to work with. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of Fire Cultists. And there's another one coming up. So now we have uh, a couple of Tentacles after us. Uh, we only want to have one of them follow us as a pet. And uh, we might have some trouble shaking the others, especially in Crossroads 4. 
But we can try... Oh, you know what? Uh, it's actually fine. Uh, we can shake them really easily because they have to go side by side, which means taking uh, equidistance, which means only one of them can go in a straight line. And I'm looking at this, and if I look really closely, I can just barely tell. Or maybe I'm just imagining things. Yeah, no, I can just barely tell where the boundary of the Hall of Mirrors is. Now, I've, I've never uh, taken the Orb of Yendor into the Hall of Mirrors. That could be interesting. I wonder, you know, does it make sure to um, avoid mirror walls? Or, you know, is there a chance that you'll just have a key spawn behind a wall? Or is it always possible to... Oh, no. Okay. Well, so much for that plan. I don't know how we got so much giant ivy after us. I did not even notice that happening. So we have lost our pet. Let's grab some shield and some speed. And like that. There we go. So yeah, this, uh, this plan is not really going uh, the way I'd hoped. So I kind of want to duck into oh geez it looks like the reptile might also uh be causing too much lag on my computer so i need what i need to do is i need to remember that uh that i need to turn down the graphics there's a tentacle for us So let's try and take this one. Uh, with the Orb of Speed, it's going to be a little bit more time-consuming. And there is a lot of stuff that wants our attention. What happens if you push a reptile into the Land of Eternal Motion? I wonder if they fa just fall asleep. I think that would be interesting. It looks like we don't quite have the angles. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we don't quite have the angles to... Oh, oh no. Boy, we're just having uh, a lot of uh, trouble with crossovers. It's like... Um, it's almost like this wants to be... You know, the series finale is like... Oh, we have every single different kind of enemy coming at us at once. All right, let's see where this one is. See if it's someplace where... Okay, so if they fall in the moat, they actually fall asleep. Uh, so it looks like that is in Kakaitis, which is no use for us. Let's see, can we knock these things into the water? What happens if you get these guys cold? We might not find out, uh, because this tentacle wants to box this guy in. Yeah, it looks like... Because, you know, because we're kiting that tentacle, it's a little bit difficult to decide where our lizard is going to go. Also curious what happens if you if you knock the uh, what are they salamanders? Yeah, well, I don't really know what happens if you knock salamanders into pits. But again, he's on the wrong side of the tentacle for us to really experiment with that. If you know, if we lead him out here, you know, we could, um, but we don't want to lose our pet completely. Oh, okay, so they drown. Interesting. So they're a little bit easier to kill than the ones uh, from the reptiles. Alright, so let's see where this one is. See if we can 
Ah, uh, no. Land of Eternal Motion, virtually impossible uh, to get back. Sometimes literally impossible because of the dogs. Uh, it's possible to do it along with the Alchemy Lab. You can build bridges out of jelly. Or slime, I mean. And, you know, there might be a way to do it, like, with the Orb of Domination, but... I don't think you would have enough charges and you would have to have... You know, you would have to have enough dragon scales that they would spawn in the Land of Eternal Motion. And then you would kind of need it to spawn at just the right time. Grey Raiders never step on Grey Cells. Well, that is not very useful. This guy is... There is very little that we can do to escape this guy. And that's unfortunate, because the, the things that slow it down... I don't know how we're getting away from it, because the things that slow it down are not here. And so I, I'm wondering if like it never steps on... Heptagons in general, but I I really don't know. I don't know the specifics of that, of why we we were able to leave it behind. But yeah, it's it's looking like our plan is just not quite going to work out. There's just there's too many variables. And uh, we're having too much chaos, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up here. We're going to find an orb of safety. I th this feels like a shorter episode, I'm not really sure. But we had a lot of chaos, and that was uh, a lot of fun. And we did do a bunch of different things, so maybe it's not too short. I, I don't have a timer in front of me, so it's always just kind of based on this gut feeling. But we are going to be continuing this series, and trying to figure out what's next probably the reptiles but you know my memory uh we're going to head into the next episode probably not remembering at all what we're trying to do and that's going to just be fun because it's going to be we get to make it up and that's you know that's one of the things i love about open world games is like you get to make up what success and failure are, what things you want, what you want out of the game. And I think it's also kind of why I like these really abstract games, is again because you kind of get to fill in with your mind what's going on. So yeah, we're going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.